Marriage, eh? Bloody marriage. Everyone's got an opinion on it, but most of us still don't know the ins and outs of getting hitched. Did we already start? Yeah. Oh. Sorry, I thought there was supposed to be a buzzer or a whistle or something. Welcome to Watch Mojo's Top 5 Myths, the series that finds the biggest myths that people actually believe and dispels them one by one. In today's installment, we're counting down the five myths about tying the knot that had us saying, I don't. Then you take a deep breath, look into her eyes, and utter the immortal words. If you don't marry me, I'll kill myself. I will. Myth number five, it takes two to marry. You know, I am so romantic sometimes I think I should just marry myself. Give me a break, Mike. What a night of romance I got ahead of me. Getting married is all about connecting with that special someone. That person could be a man, a woman, or even yourself. Wait, what? That's right, self-marriage is a thing. No, I'm not crazy, Frank, I'm making a statement. That if need be, I will marry myself. And I am not embarrassed! It is the union between a person and themselves, and can be a reflection of a number of personal beliefs. I'm getting married. To myself. While self-marriage is essentially meaningless in the eyes of the law, as in your taxes and marital status won't change, it's still a ceremony that tells yourself and others that you are happy. He has declared his marriage by the joining of hands and by the giving and receiving of a ring. I therefore proclaim him husband. This commitment places strong belief in self-love and self-compassion. Now let's see the happy married couple take their first dance. Or, uh, huh, wonder how that goes. Myth number four. The more educated a woman becomes, the less likely she is to get married. She's too old for him. She's too smart for him. Just because she's working towards her bachelor's doesn't mean she's gonna be a bachelor forever. Nevertheless, this is still a common adage that persists. Advancements in society have led to a more egalitarian existence between man and woman. As such, women have been able to achieve greater economic independence by becoming highly educated in numerous fields. But you already know that. However, this has not led to a decrease in the marriage rates of educated women. In fact, in 2008, a study showed that the marriage rate of college-educated 30-year-olds and older was higher than those without a degree. So I say, let's keep it short and sweet. Yes, just do it already. Now, of course, education is not always a testament of one person's intellectual superiority, but it does perhaps shed some light on the fact that not all smarty pants are spinsters. I used to see you outside my father's store, and then we went on some dates, and you let me have sex with you. Myth number three, divorce rates are increasing. In a world where even Brangelina has met its untimely end, it seems only logical to assume that divorce rates are on the rise. I want a divorce. However, the facts are in and divorce rates have been steadily decreasing since the 1980s. Based on data from the Centers of Disease Control and Prevention, there were 944,000 divorces and annulments in 2000, compared to 813,000 in 2014. Oh, fantastic. Well, that's good news. A couple of reasons for this decline included increased birth control usage and people waiting to tie the knot until later in life. So while we may be lowering Pitt and Joe Lee's marriage into the grave, it doesn't mean it's over for the rest of us. <laughs> Myth number two, having children will strengthen your marriage. Without the bedding ceremony, there's no real proof the Lord and Lady consummated their marriage. No, that there are other ways of providing proof. It seems so obvious. If you're struggling to get along with the person you've decided to spend the rest of your life with, have a baby. Babies are cute and cuddly and will definitely bring you and your partner closer together, R right? No. Well, several counselling psychologists have suggested that it doesn't quite work this way. Though a baby can bring a new chapter into your marriage, with it comes more responsibilities. And basically, if you and your significant other are already at each other's throats all the time, introducing a child into the mix isn't going to make things easier. I've had to I sacrifice haven't. my job, my body, my youth, my vagina! You sacrificed your yes, vagina? Yes! It will never look the same after this! Myth number one, married people have less satisfying sex lives and less sex than single people. My husband started drinking those giant sodas and he's gained 100 pounds in three months. Consequently, we haven't had sex in 10 years. I, I thought you said he gained weight in the last three months. Well, we have lots of other problems. Everyone has encountered this myth before. The day you get married is the day your sex life evaporates. And Marissa... Don't do it! <coughs> However, this simply isn't the case. 
Health experts have concluded that married couples actually have more varied sex, as they're more comfortable around one another. A 2010 study at Indiana University discovered that around 61% of singles that were interviewed hadn't had sex within the past year, comparable to only 18% of married people who took part. <laughs> and then a wheel a laugh, high five! <laughs> <laughs> So rejoice, the married life ahead of you could be a particularly fruitful one. Do you, Lucy, take Ricky to be your husband? Oh, for f sakes. So how many of these myths did you believe? I know much is true. For more engaging top 10s and committing top 5s, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Stephen, do you promise to love Emily in sickness and health for as long as you both shall live? My dad already paid the caterer.